Alex Marlowe here, editor-in-chief of Breitbart News, host of Breitbart News Daily on Sirius XM Patriot number 125. Here with Seth Dillon, who is the CEO of the Babylon Bee. Wow, one of the coolest names in the game right now. Seth, oh, thank you. Appreciate congrats that. Congrats on all the success. Yeah, thank you. Uh, a few things I want to get to with you, but first, let's talk about the event where we are, Turning Point Student Action Summit 2021. You're speaking to a crop of younger people, conservatives, a lot of yeah. them Christian-minded. Uh, what's the key message that you conveyed to them or are conveying to them uh, that they need to hear right now? Well, I'm going to talk to them a lot about this kind of cancel culture censorship stuff that we're experiencing and uh, and kind of the ways that it works out, the ways that it plays out with how they're fact checking us and smearing us and maligning us. And it is, in fact, them who are using misinformation to smear us as being a source of it. I'm going to talk about that some, but I'm also going to encourage them. Uh, you know, when you face these kinds of attacks, and they are, you know, malicious, ridiculous, baseless attacks, um, that's an encouraging thing. It means yeah. you're doing something right. Um, I think that the fact that we're attracting that kind of attention means we're doing something right. We're, we're striking a nerve, um, which is very important. I mean, I'm also going to encourage them to speak up and, and to speak boldly and speak the truth boldly because um, I think there's a lot of people right now feeling so much pressure. I don't think I know feeling so much pressure to self-censor, which yeah. is really just doing the tyrant's work for him. Exactly right. Um, so I'm gonna talk about that a little bit too. Yeah, and this is a very similar theme to what I talked about, is that how I'm trying to convey to people that it's worth it to be out and to be bold and right, to right, right. you know paint in bold colors because uh, you can go and have a life that's a righteous life, a satisfying life, and you feel free. And if you are really holding back too much, then you're not really your full self. Right, right. That's true. And it's not just that you're not your full self, it's that these are, we're in a battle right now. Yeah. And you can't sideline yourself in yeah. that. You know, I get I get criticized sometimes by people who tell me that um, that uh, my tweets are too divisive or yeah. the Babylon Bee is too divisive. We should right. be uniting around what we have in sure. common. It's like, uh, the left is trying to transition your children without yes. your consent. Right. And um, they're trying to teach kids to hate each other because of the color of their skin. Totally and you know, true. when that kind of stuff is going on, sidelining yourself and removing yourself from that conversation is not the solution. No. You're not helping anybody, least of all your own children. So. Yeah, no, it is amazing that their current obsession is to try to convince non-racist kids that they're actually racist and they should be angry about right, racism. Right, right, exactly. It's an amazing thing. This is it. Of all the things they settled on, of all right. the problems facing planet Earth right now, right. this is the one they think is the most urgent. Let's make them racist sooner. Yeah. You know? <laughs> come on. It's unbelievable. And so so this is where um, you guys come in using a humorous impression. Yes. You guys, satirical yeah. headlines. Uh, and I got to tell you, when I was at Berkeley, I would read The Onion over my, you know, chicken tikka masala, and I would laugh, but I would know that they're not with us. They're yeah. on the wrong team. Yeah. And but they it, were funny, though. They were funny, and yeah. less funny now, but they got some good ones. Uh -huh. uh, and finally, we're doing our own thing. Well, you guys are doing our own thing yeah. for us. I, yeah. it's, it, I, I'm shocked you're the first, yet I'm thrilled you're the first. Yeah. Well, um, it is... I don't know how shock. I think what's shocking is that there aren't more people doing it. Exactly. And I'll say this for a number of reasons. You know, the left has created an environment that's ripe for conservatives to stand up and fill this gap. Um, and the gap that they've created is one where they've got all these rules about things you can't joke about, all yeah. these things you can't say. You're not allowed to punch down. You know, you're not allowed to make jokes about women because they're beneath you, right? Yeah, you right. can't. You can't punch right, down right, at them. Right, right. And that kind of stuff. These kinds of rules. Yeah, it's like these rules. this is ridiculous. For one yeah. thing, you're reinforcing the very kind of like misogynistic or sexist yeah. thinking that you're supposedly attacking by telling me that I can't punch down at women. I don't think women yeah. are beneath me, you know? Yeah. But they make all these rules for comedians to follow uh, predicated on this idea that we shouldn't be offensive. We can't yeah. be offensive. Um, but comedy, what comedy does is it makes fun in light of things. That's the, right. the job of co comedians is to make fun of those stupid rules and the stupid people who make them. Um, and so when with left-wing comedians feeling um, like they have to follow these rules and not actually do comedy. They're not. They're, they are a joke at that point when they're when they're censoring themselves for that reason. But they're creating a huge opportunity for people who are willing to make the jokes you're not allowed to make anymore and say the things you're not allowed to say anymore. Um, so I'm actually shocked that there aren't more people like us doing what we're doing uh, and doing it successfully. And I hope that they get. You know, uh, I hope that we inspire people too. 